John Butcher for stealing a gentleman's watch to supper this morning. Wednesday, 2nd of August, 1810. John Butcher was found guilty of stealing on the 9th of June. A watch from a gentleman asleep in a postcase outside the Red Lion in the village of Dodgers. Oh, Don't cry. I want to get to father. Where is your father? Dragging him. What was the crime, Natty? Do you know? He took a walk, but it only for five shillings. Five shillings. Father! Five shillings. We stand here and let a boy watch his own father hang. Well, it's the law. Well, then it's a vile law. Hey, stop! John Barty. That boy of ours worries me. Oh. I mean, I thought an execution would be a treat to him. But it's outrageous the way he's been carrying on. All this talk about the state of the law and capital punishment. What is a capital punishment, Barty? Why, hanging. Well, he's again it. What? Yeah, you may well say what. I had my doubts when you took him away from prize fighting and sent him to school. And now he's back home again, I'm sure of it. He's a ramping, roaring radical. Oh. How can you sit there peacefully when a man is being hanged outside for stealing five shillings? The law's the law. Just for five shillings? Well, you must have law and order. That's not order, that's murder. That's enough, son. I may have promised your poor mother I'd make a gentleman of you. Why, there's nothing you've grudged him. From clean linen once a month to a book of etiquette. Etiquette. I remember. He made me learn that book by heart. Rules for, um, for bowing. The, um, the hand should be lifted gracefully and laid lightly upon the bosom. But remember this, Natty. The depth of the bow should be regulated to the rank of the person saluted. How deep am I going to bow to the person who sentenced that poor devil outside? No, Natty. I'm not going to be that kind of a gentleman. Well, what will you be? A member of parliament? Well, if I am, I'll see that a man's life is valued at more than five shillings. I don't let this wild sort of talk. You should have kept him to prize fighting. Well, it's not too late now. Get ready. Ready, Father. Barney, a father's duty is a very solemn thing. And it's going to be my... That'll learn you, Barney boy. His muscles are soft with book learning. <laughs> Father. Try me again, Father. It'll be harder next time. Hard as you like. Wait a minute. How long do we go on? Till you think better of it or till you can knock me down, Barney. Why then, Father, the sooner I knock you down, the better. Barney, Barney, that's blasphemous. <laughs> to attend to us? My grandfather told me I should make the acquaintance of glorious John Barty. But the glory seems to be dim. Will someone come, please? And I shorthand you. Here, John Barty, quick. Get your cover. He can go into Parliament, Natty. Yes. That was your Marcus's granddaughter, Lady Cleona Meredith. And there's the old Marcus himself, and Mr. Chichester. I expect they've stayed to watch the hanging. She? Watch a hanging? Oh, I don't believe it. Yeah, you better give a hand tidying the place up. And you might stop with your own face while you're about it. Here you are. What's the matter with my face? Jiminy! Oh, certainly. If Cleone wants to be rustic. I shall wake early and pick Primrose. You can't, Your Ladyship. 
It's the wrong time of year. <laughs> what does it take? The wrong time of year, sir. Uh, your Lordship. Then, uh, not here. Take him upstairs. Very good, Your Lordship. Uh, shut up the bit. I'm going straight up the bit. You go on, dear. Where's that innkeeper? Party! Here we are, Your Lordship. Uh, give me an arm. Yeah. Let us touch with the guns. Likely does it, Your Lordship? Uh, likely what? Likely does it, sir? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 my foot, can't you? <coughs> uh, uh, uh. Wedded bliss, Peony. We aren't wedded yet. Well, what a chilly thing to say to a lover on this very chilly evening. I wonder, if I were a poor nobody, would you still be a lover? Dear Kenny, what a ridiculous idea. Of course not. So you don't even pretend to be in love with me. What's the use of my telling you romantic stories about eternal devotion? They're not a mist of 17. That, that's why I suit you so well. You give me your quite extravagant fortune, and I give you in return the freedom of a married woman, a country seat very much in need of repair, an ancient name still more in need of repair. <laughs> See how frank I am. I believe I'm marrying you because you don't play. That was a bargain, wasn't it? You have the warming pan taken to your room, son. To mine. And tell my maid I shall be coming up directly. Mm -hmm. Lady Cleone says she'll be up in a moment. Her ladyship to you, my lad. Your end's filling up. I say, Chichester, be a good fellow and see if you can get him to put my luggage in a different room. In the other part of the house, a long way off. I'll see to it. Don't worry. Well, you might give us a kiss, sister. I might, brother, if I thought you deserved one. Stand there looking as if you wished me miles away when... when I'm always so glad to see you. Chichester's still dancing at this. Mm -hmm. What, engaged? Oh, hang it, Cleone. I begged you to hold out another six months. Well, here's to your happiness. So you think you've won? I think. You think you're going to marry Cleone, don't you? I know I'm going to marry Cleone. When? In a couple of months. And a lucky thing, too, for me. Oh. And you. Now you're going to be poor. No, rich. And able to settle. Very gladly, dear Pauline, believe me, any claim... It is something new to be able to provide for one wife with the fortune of another wife. Dear Pauline, I adore you, but you're not my wife. You let me think you'd marry me. Well, I'm not concerned with your thoughts. Your future wife might be. Oh. What do you want? Money. So I'm able to marry... A Ronald. Any Ronald? Any Ronald. Since you... Lewis. You care for her. Do you? My dear, I don't think either of us can afford to ask that question. Now, please. Oh, very well. I won't tell Grandfather you're here. But Ronald... Now, don't spoil it. Don't preach. Oh, must you? That's it, you see. You ask a woman a favor and she immediately turns schoolmistress. Suddenly, when you have an overgrown schoolboy for a brother, I'm ashamed of you. You drink, you gamble, you come begging me for money. Oh, you disgust me! Oh, fool, vixen! But 
In the circumstances, is it wise for a young and charming widow to jaunt about the country with the Ronald whom she intends to marry? It saved a carriage. I'm down to my last penny, Lord. Well, I have barely enough on me to pay for tonight's bill. It's no use appealing to me. But I have a right to appeal to you. Admit it. Couldn't you borrow from Cleone? Well, I have to go. Don't be a fool. You shall have all you need the day I'm married. But I need it now. I'm sorry. You know, nurse, if I went now to your Cleone, have a little talk about you. Oh, but you wouldn't do that. We two don't hurt each other. More than is necessary. Yes. You're always finding it necessary. This is my chance and I'm going to take it. Now, now, don't be bitter. Don't be shrill. Oh, you're going to marry Titcher, sir. Well, well, well. Would you approve, don't you, Grandfather? In a way to prevent your young rascal of a brother getting every penny out of you. When I'm gone, Titcher understands the value of money. I suppose everyone's quite convinced I'm being married for my money. You'll see to it that you don't part with your grandmother's black pearls. I'm having them pre strung for you. Oh! Ah, give them back to me. You have a fortune. Oh. Uh, I don't trust you with them before your wedding day. Pearls mean tears. Eh? No, no, not for years. I said pearls mean tears. Not since your poor grandmother died. That's why I'm having them seen to now. Good night, grandfather. Ah, find my foot. Oh, it's time. Here, the gods on Barty. Got a safe place to put my valuables in, Barty? You just watch this, your lordship. Good night again, Grandpapa. Good night, dear. Good night. There. It's a stout lock, your lordship. It's a what? A stout lock, your lordship. Oh, did it? Well. Look like Mrs. Siddons is Lady Macbeth. Oh, what a horrid comparison. But Mrs. Siddons is an extreme. Extremely beautiful woman. Still, I don't think I'm flattered. Well, the bargain was that we should never flatter each other. I believe it was. But... Do you never break a bargain? Here's the key, your lordship. Uh, never. Oh, I see. Oh, no! <laughs> Listen, my dear, I can mean that. All right, sir. You clumsy fool! All right, sir. I should think so, too. What sort of an end do you call this? Lots of servants. Let me dust you down, sir. Let me brush you up, sir. <coughs> Get out of this. That is either he clears out. I must humbly apologize, sir. He shan't be employed about the house again. Your beautiful coat, sir. That's smart. I'll have it clean at once, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you've done it on purpose. <laughs> Shall I brush you up, sir? No, 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 Stop it, stop it, stop it. You know, Natty, I believe Lady Cleone saw it all. And what's more, Natty, I believe she's no more in love with that pompous dancing master than she is with... Well, than she is with me. No, 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 Barney. Cleone is one of the quality, and so is my mother. Yes, but you're a prize fighter, some by boy. I think I'm in love, Natty, and I don't like the feeling. No, it ain't pleasant. I'll soon have earache myself. And I speak from experience. Now, come on, Barney. Off you go, quickly. Now, you go, of course, to Brother Tuckett for the night, see? But, Natty, I've got to see her again. Yes, well, so you shall, my boy, when you're in Parliament. Go on, off you go quickly before your father comes down. <laughs> hmm. What a waste of good cabbage. I'm ashamed of the lad, Natty. Ah, oh, it'll clean. What time breakfast for his young lordship? Six. Well, by the way, where's that young rascal of mine gone to? Brother Tuckett's. He ain't likely to run off, is he, because of my anger? Ah, oh, no, he'll be back in the morning. And with his tail between his legs. Mm, I hope so. Good night. Good night. I'll look up.
Why on earth do you want to leave at this hour? I can't admit. To avoid your relations. Your lordship slept well. Never closed my eyes. <laughs> Short of silver. Oh, <coughs> won't you allow me, sir? We are late, grandfather. Allow me to settle my own bill in my own time and in my own way. Where's my travelling bag? Ah. Poor old John Barton is in low water. I'm his oldest patron, you see, and uh, in debt, isn't he? Can I help you, grandfather? Somebody, fetch a constable. What? Marcus has been robbed while he slept. It means I tell you I never closed my eyes. I'll go myself. Oh, no, Barty. Anyone rather than you. But, Louis. Didn't you put your valuables into his charge last night? Sure, sir. May not. I tell you I put them in. Yes, yes, you uh, put them in. I put them in the cupboard myself for his lordship. Did you know they were put there? No, sir. Who else was in your room last night? Apart from myself. Journey. Nobody except John. You better confess, buddy. Daddy, fetch the constables. I tell you. Nothing on them, Your Lordship. Oh, surely. These? They say the obvious place is always the best. Oh, Mr. Chichester, of course, I quite forgot, sir. I've got your watch in there. I locked it away for safety when I was cleaning a coat last night. Didn't I, Natty? Well, if you say so, then you did jump on it. I dare say. There, you see, what did I tell you? His own keys. I think that settles it. But the bank notes, where are they? The pearls. Where are the pearls? Oh, were there pearls? Your Lordship, you've known me for over 30 years. But someone have broken in. Dear me, dear me, this, this is not your problem. Your Lordship. Will you charge him, Your Lordship? I'm afraid so. Robbery? Ah, that's a hanging matter. Come on. Sorry, Natty, I'm, I'm a bit dazed. What do you mean? Well, I mean, we've got to find proof of John Barty's innocence. I mean, someone done it. And if neither me nor you nor your father ain't done it, who's left? What are the knobs? Lord Ronald? Yeah. He left the house uncommon early, didn't he? And uncommon quiet. Lord Ronald. Lord Ronald, Chichester, her ladyship. You dare well, to suggest the claimant to me on it. Don't you dare me, or I'll fit you one you'll remember. I'm surprised at you. I mean, your father's old friend. Shamed of you. Sorry, Natty. So I should think. Lord Ronald. 
Let's look at his room. What are you burning? Burning your curl paper? I haven't done anything wrong, have I, Master Barney? Now run along, there's a good girl. I owe you. Oh, who? Who wrote it? That's one of the things we're going to London to find out. London? Mm. Now I want to look at the cupboard where the Marquis's money was put. Hello? What's this? Barney, look! Somebody's been tampering with this lock. Look at those scratches. Wait a minute. Who was it? That's the second of the things I'm going to find out when I dine with the Marquis of Camberhurst. But Barney, you Don't can't... Don't you see? If I can be friendly with them, watch them, make love to them, I can find out their secrets quickly enough. For that, I need money. Money? You leave that to me. Chichester left his clothes behind him. No guest had arrived. Order fresh horses, my good fellow. I have to go to London. Will it do? By goes there, do look the gentleman. The amateur gentleman, Natty. How on earth have you got there? My stocking. Stocking? For you, Barney boy. A lot of it's copper, but oh, the knobs don't tip as well as they used to. That's all you've got, man. Well, what's good of it to me if they if they hang John Barney? We thought what we're going to call ourselves in London. Beverly. John Beverly. Esquire. That's the style. Barney, mind your clothes. Yeah, 
Twenty guineas on the carter. Done. Twenty guineas gone. If I catch you doing that again. He's a nice beast. Why don't you treat him well? I ain't got nothing against the oars. Oh, that's better. Here, take this. Get yourself a drink and get him a feed of oats. Ooh, thank you, sir. And again. Thank you, sir. Here, Barney. That was a guinea, not a copper. What did you say, my man? Huh? My hat. Sorry, sir. Get back on your seat. Oh, excuse me, sir. Oh, we excuse you. You've just won me 20 guineas. Very happy to help the deserving poor. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that flower fancier has shredded my coat. How's it shred? Might be amusing. I'll think it over. And when you have thought it over, sir, you might let me know the result. Johnny, do your best for this gentleman. I understand, sir. Very civil. Young man, it may interest you to know that that was His Royal Highness, the Prince Regent. Really? I should like to see him again. You will. The Prince would expect me to bring you to Carton House. No doubt. Be charming. Young man. Yes? Where are you staying? I, um, <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Oh, then lodge at the Almanac. Oh, thank you. Is the Albany an inn, sir? An inn. I have my abode there. Getting on? Must be at one of their clubs at four o'clock. What's the name of it? Um, Brooks or something. What do you want to ruin a good coat like this for? I don't want the owner to recognize it when we meet. Besides, I'm going to start a fashion. You'll see 20 coats like that by the end of the week. Well, like this? Mm -hmm. Did you change that stocking into guineas? Yeah. Ah. And you be careful of it, mine. That's got a loss, this, that is. Chichester's coat, Natty's stocking, Father's snuff box and mother's name. How much is left of me? Now, well. Oh, my dear Dickie. May I present you Mr. John Beverly? Sir John Dickie. Oh, Our servant, sir. Delightful oh, evening. Hmm? Charming. Honest fellow, but simply. A trifle ponderous. Ronald, may I present you Mr. John Beverley, Lord Ronald Meredith. Uh, no, sir, sir. Who is the fellow? I've never seen him before. A protégé of the prince, I believe. See such a coat. Such material. Is it lace? We must find out who his tailor is. Chichester, the prince especially desires that you and Beverley should be acquainted. Delighted to meet you, Mr. Beverley. Will you? Thank you, no. I never take snuff. No, thank you, no, no. You play fair, oh, Mr. Beverley? No, so far hazards, my only love. Oh, we must complete your education. <laughs> I shall hold you both to that promise. As haven't we met before? Your manner is very familiar. I hope you don't imply that I take liberties. You're in Georgina, dear. No space. No space, partner. Mama, what's that? Don't chatter, Georgina. Oh dear, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I thought it was a clock. Ah, again, partner. Oh, Georgina, dear, don't breathe down my back. Now, oh, there's your host. This is Georgina. Nice to welcome you here, my dear. Your first ball, eh? No, this is my first party. My first ball will be at Carlton House. I stand corrected. Georgina, don't be so pert. Is your dress for the ball finished yet, Georgina? What are you talking about? Haven't you heard? We're getting up an entertainment for the dear prince. English living pictures. We all stand still in costume in a frame. Georgina's in the Morland. And you? The Reynolds. And I? Well, my dear, you were away. Oh, I see. Who's deal? A mine, I think. No, Mama, it isn't. It's hers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah. You're a bold player, Beverly. Oh. Do you explore other sports? Any that offer interest? Racing? I've never seen a race. 
Dark horse. Dark horse. I assure you, I never have. Boxing. Boxing, ah, yes. What do you think of Big Benson? Well, frankly, I think he can be matched. I'd like to know by whom, would you? Oh, come, Beverly, don't be so secretive. Well, I fancy a pupil of John Barty. John Barty? Ronald, wasn't that the man that robbed your grandfather? Yes. He's such a jolly old boy, you wouldn't think he'd do a thing like that. Would you back your man? I'd cover anything you'd stake. Well, then, let's say, tonight's winnings? Excellent. Gentlemen, your servant. Oh, by the way, what's your man called? Um, the amateur gentleman. Amateur gentleman? Well, I have to Who on earth is he? I don't know. I've seen him before. Where have I seen him before? Oh, Beverly. I'm going on to my grandfather's house. Would you care to join me? You should be honored. Admirable. Well, I make it 17. 18. Well. Oh, very well. 18. I'll take you tomorrow. Is your brother expected tonight? Expected, but he's uncertain, you know. Yes, okay. But that's part of the attraction, isn't it, Georgie? Do you like her? Don't tell anyone. No. Nor do I. <laughs> oh, look, there is your brother. Now I present Mr. Beverly, my grandfather, Lord Camberhurst. Servant, Lord. Do come. Oh, oh, good evening, Miss Georgina. Cleone, may I present Mr. Beverly? My sister, Lady Cleone Meredith. The depth of the bowel should be regulated to the rank of the person saluted. I beg your pardon. I beg yours. Georgina, your hair. Uh, may I present Mr. Um, uh, uh, Beverly. Um, John Beverly. I find it so difficult remembering my name. Pauline. Uh, well, yeah. Country air does you good. Getting up early, doesn't it? Oh, surely. You escaped a very unpleasant scene. So you really are going to let your innkeeper be tried for stealing the Marcus's property? Not at all. Good evening. Good evening. As far as I'm concerned, you'll be convicted for having my watch and chain in your possession. Who's the gentleman in the funny coat? Funny? That's a work of art. He's a friend of mine. Oh. I said you was. Well, Mama says it doesn't thing. It would be in there. He's slipping through your fingers. Everything does. My only permanent possession seems to be a skin of pearl. You like it? It's rapturous. Have you also made the castle hat ball? Oh, I have to be in the sailor return picture. But Lord Ronald, they haven't chosen the sailor yet. What should I have to do? Oh, just stand still, you know, and kiss your poor old mother. Couldn't I kiss you? Georgie. Wolf. I've made friends with one of the sailors, and I've seen your father. He's taking it hard, Barney, that you didn't come with me. Why don't you go and see him? Oh, how can I? Don't you understand that once I'm recognized as his son, I might as well be back in the inn? Well, have you found out anything yet? Not a thing. Then what's the good of... Why can't you tell me what you're planning? Because I don't know myself. What? Now what are you up to? I see. Your fine friends are writing your love letters, are they? Not love letters, Natty, but they might write them. Well, I wish it was cash. My lords and gentlemen, don't forget Georgie. God bless the prince. I stand.
and correct it. Your Royal Highness, my lords and gentlemen, a match for a thousand guineas between Big Benson, the Lincoln Butcher, and the amateur gentleman in a fight to the finish. On my right, Big Benson. <laughs> On my left, the amateur gentleman. Good guess. It's Beverly. Chichester, do you see it, Beverly? What does he mean by spooky? John Benson. Agree. Then have a fire, gentlemen. Don't be a coward. Go on, Barney. Go on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Benson. Evan is in trouble. I'm ashamed of you letting him throw you twice. I'll throw you out of the ring if, if you don't shut up, Natty. Oh, now get in. Oh, oh please, How do you like that, eh? Gonna win, I tell you. I back up against any man in England. <laughs> oh, Barney, Barney, Barney! If only your father had seen you. <laughs> Gentlemen win. Congratulations, Beverly. Very game. Very game indeed. Thank you, sir. Beverly? My debt. Oh, thanks very much. And congratulations on the trick. Did you say trick? I said trick. Oh, come, Chichester. Mr. Chichester feels himself injured. Lewis, you are being offensive. Oh, I had no particular intention of offending. Perhaps I should have said masculine. Congratulations, Beverly. See you later. Coming, Townsend? Certainly. Beverly, you were wonderful. I mean it. Masquerade. Be nice, Natty. Here, for the stocking. Stocking? It'll fill a trouser leg. <laughs> What's the game now, Barney boy? Same game. Watch him, make love to him if necessary. And don't call me Barney boy. Beverly's casting some shadows. <laughs> Aren't Jen sheep? 
They always say follow me leader. Ronald doesn't. He's got quite a different coat. Yes. And so has Beverly, I noticed, already. I have an idea your sister wants me. You fatty yourself, my dear fellow. She can't stand the sight of it. <laughs> you want me, don't you? I hope you'd remember what I said to you yesterday. Ronald. I know he's young and foolish, but he's my brother and I love him. Won't you please stop pulling him to pieces? You see, I'm not yet quite sure, Lady Cleone, that he is merely young and foolish. But if ever I am sure, I promise you that I will stop pulling him to pieces. Ronald's the only creature in the whole world that I care for. I congratulate Mr. Chichester. Beverly, are you trying to avoid a game with me? Look at Ronald. will do him harm with Georgina. What am I to do? Perhaps an appeal to Mr. Beverly might be effective. Or did you say that with him just now? Did you? Yes. Oh. And did he see your point of view? I humiliated myself. And it amused him. Double or quits? Shall I throw first or will you? I daren't. Why don't you call a third to throw for you? Cleone, you always bring me luck. Come and throw for me. You'd better explain. Your brother, Lady Cleone, has been so unlucky as to lose 25,000 guineas to me. I rashly agreed to throw double or quits. Either I gain or lose everything. Now will you throw for him? Bring me luck, Keone. One throw or best out of three? One. I can't pay him. I had no right to stake. They'll throw me out no, of my clubs. No, be quiet. Mr. Beverly, in a month I shall be married and in control of my own fortune. Why this excitement? Right, I owe you. I prefer it written in full. Have your wish, Lady Cleone. What is in that box of his? Snuff. I'm afraid of him. I've seen his face somewhere and it's connected in my mind with... Pearls? What is it we've forgotten? You did destroy that note, I scribbled. Of course. You're sure? Certainly. I burnt it. Good. At least... What is it? What are you remembering? I won't reproach you, but tell me. I twisted up my hair with it. 
I had no curl paper. Then in the morning, I threw it in the fire. Was the fire still alight? I, I don't remember. How can I thank you? I could kiss you all. Nothing to thank me for, Lady Cleone. Well, don't be too generous. Let me be grateful. I love you. But so look. I love you. I love you. And I love you. You were cheating. Cheating your brother. Is that your profession? No. Then why? If you'd do a thing for me, I could tell you. I said I'd do anything. I still say it. Even though I love you. What do you want me to do? How jaded this room is. Come to the window. Isn't London beautiful? I go sightseeing every day, you know. The towers, St. Paul's. Will you come with me tomorrow? You can bring a chaperone. What a strange wish. Dear Lady Cleone. I've been looking for you everywhere. Goodbye. A delightful evening. And we meet at Carlton House tomorrow night. Shall you be there, Beverly? Where else? <laughs> May I avail myself of that box of yours? Oh, certainly. I've, I've left mine. Honored. Well, Lewis, I thought you never touched snuff. Uh, I'm only now uh, acquiring the... <laughs> My best before I dress. Well, I suppose this place really is worth seeing. Treadmill, your ladyship. It's the new invention for curbing the high spirits of the synth. Marvellous for the figure. Oh, don't! Get lively now. Let the ladies pass. Being taken out for exercise. Down in the yard. Get lively now. What are those cages? Gazelles, my lady. Need they treat them like wild beasts? Well, my dear, that's practically what they are. Excuse me, sir, not up them stairs. That's the way the Larson is. Hardly worth seeing. But you step down here, sir. Careful, ladies. Six steps, ladies. The condemned cells, ladies. Oh! The occupant of this one is to be turned off Saturday. Turned off? Hang. Do you think we could see him? Well, uh, I think I could manage it. Step this way, ladies. He won't hurt you. Stand up, can't you? Why did you bring me here? <laughs> Upon my soul, John Bart. I'm sorry to see you here, my man. So that's the way of it. I see. Can't we do anything? It's very painful indeed, but you know, Lady Cleone, the law is the law. We can't interfere. No good holding out hopes. Of course, my man, if there's any little last request that I can fulfill, I... Nothing, feel... sir, thank you. But unless someday you'd have the goodness to tell my son. He's beyond my reach at the moment. That his father left him the same kind love. That's all, sir. Well, a highly interesting. And who is in here? Don't you ever have a murderer? 
He was, my lady, but the cell's been unoccupied since yesterday. Oh. Oh, I see. Hurry. Did you mean you'd do anything for me? Get those two out of the way. Why? He's my father. Oh, you poor... Leave it to me. Where are they going now? More for the exercising yard, my lady. Oh, may we look? Yes, my lady. Father. Tonight, pray for fun. A bit hard on the vocal cords. <laughs> What's a vocal cord? Well, a vocal cords, um, well, it's, uh, anyway, it's better wet than dry on a foggy night, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Looking on us tomorrow for the execution? No. <coughs> Much as my place is worth. You see, my gentleman don't believe in hanging, unless it's for murder. What? You mean to say that if a chap helps himself to my horse and cart, he won't swing if he's caught? What is England a coming to? Well, my gentleman says we've all got a right to live. Mm, you will excuse me if I pass a remark, but your gentleman must be one of them atheists. Oh. Hey, here, look here. Come here. Uh, thank you, sir. Oh. Much obliged to you, sir. Hope to see you here more often, sir. Maybe folks, sir. <coughs> servant fellow. I just sent to fetch a pair of meat boys, sir. Ah, well, get yourself a pint of porter. Thank you very much, sir. Ah, and you too, my man. Did you see him? All's well, tonight. Good for you, McGlory. Enough, my man. Be off with you. <coughs> oh. Pardon, ladies. Oh. That man was tipsy. <coughs> <coughs> My dear, I, I didn't bargain for a fog. Rest. <coughs> oh, no, I couldn't. What is it? Well, the polite call it the water of life. Among the lower orders, however, it's known as mother's ruin. Put this masquerade into your head. My mother belonged to your world. What you must have suffered among us all. What made you suspect Ronald? This. Oh, of course, I left my snuff box in my lodgings. But you see, I found a scrap of paper in the room that Pauline Darville had my father's in. I've been trying to identify the handwriting. I know now that it's not Ronald's. Lewis. Would that hurt you very much? Cleone, would it? Pauline and Lewis, it's horrible. I accuse no one until I have proof. That proof I must have, and quickly. My father's breaking prison tonight. Here, sir. I know I shan't have time to dress, and not really dress. And the dear prince especially urged me to come early. He said, Dear Lady Hunter, without you, a ballroom is a
way, Father. Oh, Throw it. This is fire, that's all I ask. Here, this ain't my weapon, but this is. Good luck, Doctor. Where are those keys? No. Harry, you've got your orders. Yes. Bye, Father. Good luck. I'll see you soon. Quick. Hey, there I've just discovered that Beverly is out of town tonight. It'd be an excellent moment to call him. Together? Naturally, we're mutual protection against misunderstandings. Lewis, I don't want to. Look. Why, it's... Cleone's engagement ring. She gave it back tonight. And you came straight to me? Because you've never yet failed me. Will you come? Don't I always, when you whistle. Didn't you see his face before he knocked you out? It was the little one knocked me out, the big one took my coat. Would he be John Vardy like <coughs> Can anyone help me? I've been robbed on the King's Highway, hauled out into the road by some ruffian who drove off with my coat and pair. Oh, let it be John Barty. Yes, I know, but I've got to get back to town. Was he a stout man uh, with the look of a prize fighter? That's the man. That's John Barty. Which way did he drive off? Towards London. Ah, that's John Barty. You take it from me, you run into John Barty. Yes, I shouldn't be a bit surprised if that was John Barty. And I shouldn't be a bit surprised if he's in London by now while we're standing here talking. Ah, uh, don't you worry, sir. We'll get you to London, all right. I'll go and harness the horses. John Barty. That's who he was, sir. John Barty. I know who he was, John Barty. <laughs> There's no one there. Here's the Albany, sir. Farm's all cleared away. Ah, too late to help us with John Barty. Where will he head for, do you suppose? Well, now, my experience is, sir, the rabbit bolts to its burrow, the river winds to the sea, and the criminal invariably returns to the scene of his crime. Well, if you think Barty's back at the inn, what are you doing here? Oh, the law can't be hurried, sir. I've got a report at headquarters. Then tomorrow, I commence tracking him down. Well, I'm extremely obliged to you, my man. There you are. Thank you, sir. Oh, one moment, sir. And the party what attacked you got a cauliflower here? Undoubtedly. Ah, that would be John Barty. No question about that, sir. John Barty, that's who that'll have been. Yes, good. John Barty. Must. See, your curl paper could have hanged me. We still don't know who Beverly is. What possessed you to wear those pearls? Take them off. They never leave me. Ronald's thrown me over. What's left me but these? And you?
you want to face exposure. Here's the fortune you put in my hands. Come away with me, Lewis. Think of it. Rich. Free. Together. Given to me. No. I think you better. No. They're my only hold on you. Are you threatening me? Yes. Mrs. Dalton. What a delightful surprise. That you should have thought of me on your way to the ball. Let me look at you. The dress is from Paris, of course. And a new bracelet. What have you got in your hand? Give it to me. Give it to me! Oh. Who brought you here? No one. How did you open that drawer? I didn't. Well, who did? Who did then? Tell me, who did? Well, I... Excuse me troubling you, sir, but isn't the matter of that cauliflower here? You want John Barty, don't you? Haven't you understood it's John Barty? I'm after. Come with me. You're to be one of the pictures, Lady Cleone. Grave or gay? Grave, sir. What a pity. I shall miss the dimple. Dimple? Oh, oh sir, you're making me blush. <laughs> Better still. <laughs> Sister, sir, we need her behind the scenes. If you must. Your Royal Highness, my lord, ladies and gentlemen, we promise ourselves the pleasure of presenting tonight to you and your guests a series of pictures conceived by our most famous English painters and reproduced for you by the beauty, the talent, of certain loyal and devoted sons of his royal highness. May I now beg you to allow us the freedom of the ballroom for the next ten minutes? You do look a darling. So do you. Georgina, come over here. You're in a draught. Isn't your honor ready yet? Up there you are. It is rather exciting. Get rid of her. Uh, Lady Hanston, might we have your advice? 
on the stage. Can nobody do anything without me? Helpless. Quite helpless. Now your mother disapproves of me. Well, if only you'd stop your horrid gambling. I'm staking my last throw tonight. What on? You. Lord Ronald, uh, Miss Georgina, you really must come now. Sorry. Ah. Ready? Give me a moment. I'm sitting by the prince, just explaining it all, you know. I am announcing, Lady Hunston. All the more. <laughs> Is that the warrant ready? Got the warrant, brother. I ain't got the warrant. You got it. I ain't got it. I gave it to you. Who? Oh. Josiah Smither. Now, that ain't the one. Case of coining. Lastly. Ah, oh, here we are. Beverly. For the murder of Mrs. Pauline Darville. Yes, I got it, Joe. I got it. We got it, sir. Yes, sir. You can't come in here, my man, and well you know it. They're with me. Uh, taking part in the entertainment. I beg your pardon, Mr. Chichester. Shall I take them round for you, sir? Yes, I'll join them at the door of the green room. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, has Mr. Beverly arrived? Not yet, sir. Not that way, you don't. Follow me. The sailors return. The sailors return. Thy Morland. George Morland. When I get a signal, cast Mr. Beverly and arrest him. But arrest ain't legal in a royal residence. Well, get him outside then. Mr. Chitterson, what have you been doing? Keep your crutches yourself, Count Rolf. Really, no offense meant, I'm sure. Oh, these theatricals, never again. Give me, Cleone, I was delayed by the doings of a friend of yours. You're keeping the prince waiting. Slip away, drive all night, and be married to the first church we come to in the morning. Mother would rage. She couldn't do anything to you. We'd go and call on her, and I'd have my ring on my finger. Mr. Beverly, I entreat you. Mr. Beverly, please. Uh, Mr. Chichester, I beg you. That's right. Yeah, that's splendid. Now, that will do, Anne. Uh, yes, desist, Anne. Desist. We're late. We're late for keeping his royal highness waiting. Joshua Reynolds. Your father. Free and on his way to the inn. I'll tell you the rest in the ballroom. Meet me there when you dress. What comes now? Oh, surely there aren't any more. Beverly, there's your man. I'll trouble you to come along with us, sir. Very well. Quickly tighter. Put your hand higher. So, splendid. Now on your life, don't move. Open the curtains. We've had the last one. Open them! Oh, no, no. Don't 
Bravo, Beverly. What do you call this? The Rake's Progress, sir. Hogarth. And so we end our loyal, devoted entertainment. Go around and wait till he comes out. But you were ravishing, my dear, ravishing. <laughs> well, Lewis, you and Beverly made a fine pair of foils. <laughs> ah, Beverly, where's the indispensable snuff box? For once I left it behind me. Ah. I, I never leave things behind me. Chichester, sink me, but you were devilish grim in the tragic news. Give me an excuse to leave. Are you ready to go, sir? I'm very tired. That comes of all this waltzing. Uh, uh, Mr. Beverly, would you order our coach? Beverly, later, Chichester. Uh, a moment, Louis. I can't stop now. Uh, please, Let I... go. Oh, Mr. Beverly, could you find your gene Oh, Lady Hudson, would you spare our Beverly to me for a moment? Impossible. Lady Hudson has desired me to find Miss Georgina, which involves a search for Lord Ronald. Leave it to me. Mr. Chichester, I suppose you haven't seen Georgie. Oh. Well, well, but Beverly, how could you? One minute, Beverly. Oh, Chichester, you simply must hear Townsend's late. Oh, which one? Oh, that one. Yes, there, sir. I do think you'll appreciate it. <laughs> now, look here. A friend of mine. I dare to say, but you all know him. Oh, really? But I can't think to myself now. I must tell somebody. Where's Lillian? Ah. Oh. Beg your pardon, ma'am. Beg your pardon, sir. Beverly. Ah, oh, Chichester, here you are. Let's see who gets down there first. Shall I dust you down, sir? Shall I brush you up, sir? Now I know who you are. You were at the inn that night. You were the waiter. You are John Barty's son. The Marquis of Camberhurst's coach stops the way. Take that coach. I can't make it out. You seem to have been driving for hours. But how can you see me in the dark? It isn't dark. Look at that morning light. bacon what you brought up the end. You remember Hannibal, don't you? <laughs> you ever a soul that one, Ed? Hmm. No, Natty. I can't eat easy, knowing that they're after me. I did ought to be in hiding. Now, 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 I keep on telling you. 
If Barney had wanted you to go into the coal hole, you'd have said so. Loud and long. You do take your orders from that lad, don't you? <laughs> well, I'm not the only one. He's at half London on the off. Performing pleas were nothing to it. What's that? No, 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 no. Now, keep quiet. Don't you budge. Father! <laughs> oh, I've got the whole lot of them. Her ladyship, the Marquis, and Chichester's following. Go out and bring them in, Natty. I see. Hard to bring them in, am I? Huh. You do give your orders, don't you? The Marquis, kidnapped. At this hour, and I'm to welcome him home. Don't argue, don't argue. I don't have an explanation. How are you, fellow? I want an explanation. This I'll take my foot, Your Lordship. Take care of your head, Grandfather. Jackson, King's Highway. Where's your Lordship? Well, where's that rascally coachman? But, but would you fancy a cup of chocolate? I should fancy nothing. Not a good driver. <laughs> Mr. Beverly, are you responsible for this outrage? And John Barty, would somebody have the goodness to explain to me what is going on? Grandfather, dear. Perhaps your Lordship would fancy a nice new lady. <laughs> Don't cackle, Cleone. Ah, oh, Beverly. I thought I'd find you here. Find me here, Chichester? Oh, I led you here by the nose. Sink me, Mr. Beverly. That's not his name. I'm sorry to upset Cleone. It's time she knew that this Mr. Beverly is... Is John Barty's son. You see, my lord, I brought you here because I felt that only here would I be able to prove my father's innocence. Natty, where's that banknote? One of your lordship's missing notes. Mrs. Darville paid the bill with it. Mrs. Darville? Grandfather, she was here with Ronald. I saw them both. I found this on the floor of the room after you all had left. You'll recognize the handwriting. The enclosed money should satisfy your immediate needs. Take charge of the rest and you'll double the debt I owe you. The signature, as you see, is... There was no signature. Because there was no paper. My dear Beverly, what a childish trick. And now, have you any more preposterous charges? Anybody present here with the name of John Barty? I told you. I told you, Barney. Father. Ah. Then you'll be John Barty. Now, you better come quiet. Yes, and while you're in this acquisitive mood, my men, you may as well arrest the other Mr. Barty. What is the charge, sir? Murder. Murder? What is all this? Pauline Darby was found in his rooms last night, stabbed. That's right, sir. I was put on the job myself. And now, young Barty. Oh, no. Ah, oh, don't you worry, Missy. There, they, they sit quite comfortable. There they are, right and tight. Now, you go to hear me. That's the style. You've, uh, you've dropped your anger, sir. Oh, thank you, my man. You're sure it's yours, sir. Well, of course. Look there, there's my initial. Found on the courts. I'll keep this as evidence. I think that's how we planned it, wasn't it, sir? As others see as Chichester. Handy little thing, ain't it? Come on. We have had a job getting here. Well, you'll have a worse job getting him away. You better be careful, he bites. Go on, take him along. Yeah, that one on the house before you go. Well done. And now, my lord, in the matter of John Barty. John Barty has charge of me. Here, take this nonsense off. And then you can see me to a bedroom. I haven't slept a wink. What are you standing there for? <laughs> now, my lady, in the matter of John Barty's son. I have another one on the house. I can't kiss you here. What are we to do? There's only one way out of it that I can see. Tell me. Ask your father's advice. My father? Didn't he run away with us? Oh. <laughs> Here. We're running away. So are we. <laughs>